What's up guys, my name is Grady Alik. I'm an embedded software engineer and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to react to a video called Glitterbomb 2.0 versus Porch Pirates by Mark Rober. Before we get started with this video, make sure you hit that like button for YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Without further ado, Let's get started. This guy stole my package and he's about to open it in his house. Hello. But what he doesn't know is that this is a new and improved custom built bait package that is recording him on four different cameras that just released a pound of the world's finest glitter along with some other nasty surprises. What the f I'm really excited to see what kind of new improvements he's made for this product. I know last time for the Glitter Bomb 1.0 video, I mentioned that he should do some improvements and I'm wondering if actually some of them came to be in this video. We started with a complete redesign of the box to make it more streamlined and secure. For contrast, last year's design was a bit of a rat's nest. The fundamentals are still the same where you have a battery powered custom printed circuit board on the bottom that has a built-in accelerometer so it can sense when it's been jostled and then it tells these four phones to start recording. So immediately when you move the box it starts recording? I'm just wondering because the dad sounds like it's just gonna take a lot of battery, but I mean, I guess you would want to record like the entire time the package has been moved uh, to see like what the people are doing with it and so on. You'll be able to record the thief no matter which side they open it from. And then right here we have some fart spray, but we added a second bottle this year. So as both these motors spin cams around, not only does it spray twice as much, but we changed the formula this time around and it is wretched. Yes, fart spray. This is what I was looking forward for. Like they needed to add a second bottle and make it worse. Last time the reactions from the people, it didn't look like they were too concerned about the fart spray. I, I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't that strong, but this time it has to be better. It has to be worse for, for them. Better for us, for the reactions, worse for them. And just to prove how much worse it was, I sprayed last year's formula labeled A, and then this year's formula labeled B for 10 different people without telling them which was which. Oh, That's like proper poo. <laughs> oh God. He just took a dump on my face. <coughs> oh my gosh, this, this looks so bad. Again, that's like an engineering improvement, right? Obviously, like you, you looked at the product, this was missing, it had to be worse, the fart spray had to be worse to, to actually make it look and smell like it's poop. But even if we somehow don't recover it, all these phones have LTE data plans, so they'll upload their footage to the cloud right away so then we can see what happened. And then we have the main course, which is this spinning cup powered by a motor underneath here, which we fill with the finest glitter we could find. We also added sound effects this year, so after both the glitter and the fart spray have successfully deployed, we start counting down. With all these new improvements, for fart spray and the new sounds and whatever else there might be, they had to probably make some improvements on, on the actual software that runs on the microcontroller. So they, they have to optimize it to make it more power efficient. Otherwise, again, they run out of battery real quick unless they got a better battery that would help them with that. But again, I would actually work on the code to make it more efficient. And a lot of work goes into these things to make them power efficient. It's, uh, it's not as easy. So it's, it's definitely a combination. So a hardware engineer has to design the hardware that cho uh, chooses the components that would make it really power efficient. But then also on the software side, you have to utilize the CPU so that it doesn't consume so much power. The more power efficient you can be, the better it is. So the idea is the bad guy comes sneaking by and then steals it off the porch. And then when they eventually remove the lid, a magnet taped inside triggers this Hall effect sensor, which tells the circuit board brain it's go time and everything is set in motion. Essentially the Hall effect sensor would just change the voltage level for a quick second. And then there has to be some trigger recognition system in the microprocessor that will just say like, okay, there has been a trigger on this uh, input output uh, pin and uh, it would just be like, okay, let's start, let's, everyone, everyone, let's get into the motion, let's start working. The CPU would just like kick off and, and just start doing all these things, like throwing the glitter around, like playing the sounds, fart spray, all these things. And that's, that's really like the entry point for everything that needs to happen within the software. The new design looks so much better of the whole glitter bomb. 
I think they've done a really good job. That's, that's a lot of uh, mechanical engineering that goes into that design. And you, you might think that it's like an easy thing to do. Again, AutoCAD and doing all that stuff, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of work and all these measurements, making sure everything fits. And if this goes into production, if you do molding or anything like that, any, any small change you have into the system is gonna be so expensive to do because you have to go through the whole process again. You have to create a new mold and all these things. So like usually something like this needs to be like spot on. And things started out a bit rocky when we got a notification that the first box was stolen and then we noticed it was intermittently moving all throughout the city. So while we were trying to locate it, we checked the feed and realized a UPS driver was so convinced the package was real, he scanned it and picked it up and it was riding around in his truck. Poor UPS guy. I wonder how did he get it back? Like just followed him like around the town and be like, hey dude, like, uh, you know, you took a package from, from my porch and uh, I'd like to get it back. It was not meant for you, it was meant to be for someone who actually would want to steal it. So as they were walking around, glitter started to spill out. Oh, look at that. There's glitter coming out of it. Oh, it's totally scam. Yo, Nick! Which is, as they say, Thank you very much. Giveaway. It's totally a scam. When you open it, it's gonna explode with glitter. They, f they figured it out. And I wonder if there's something they can do about the glitter not coming out like a vacuum system that like sucks out the glitter and blows it out instead of like throwing it all around like when spinning. I, I guess the spinning is probably the easiest way to do and probably most power efficient. And we started hitting our stride. Oh, oh my God. They need to be able to do something. You, you know with the, with the magnet, it, it just made it so much easier to like put the box back on. They, they need to have like something that um, will lock in that you can't, you can't put the box back on. The, uh, like whether it's like a electric switch or something like that, that pops out, like the processor will send a signal that, hey, the box has been opened, like, like push these things out so that no one can put the box back on. Otherwise they're gonna pluck all the fart spray and the glitter and like everything. It's, it's easier to counter this and I think the last one they had like a mechanical switch there that probably helped with that a little bit because the switch like dropped out like this as soon as you open the package so it's kind of harder to like put the package back on because the switch is open so you have to like push it back and I think this is something they definitely need to address for the 3.0. Recovery sequence initiated. I love the police chatter. I think that's a really good one. Honestly, if I would be ever in a situation like that, which I would never be, but that would scare the crap out of me. Just be like, oh my gosh, this is like some kind of police undercover stuff and I'm gonna get screwed over right now. So I gotta get rid of this thing before I'm gonna get caught and I'm gonna go to jail for the rest of my life. Oh, the smell is so bad. Yes, it worked. Last time, I didn't think I even heard anyone say in the Glitter Bomb 1.0 that it smelled bad. So I think good engineering improvement. Good job, guys. No, it's still a speaker. Such a bad idea to open it. You just heard like all these things and they're like, oh, let's, let's still check it out. Let's all smell like a fart. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Did they open it up in like a Metro PCS store? Oh my gosh, what are these guys? Did he work there or something? They just went there behind and just open it up? Jeez, that's, that's, that's reckless. Oh my gosh, if I would be the store owner, I would have called the cops on these people. Honestly, they probably made the whole freaking store smell like fart. And that's no bueno, no bueno. Found this package and recovered it by the dumpster. We walked by the store and they were sweeping and spraying Febreze, which felt amazing. Even after spraying the Febreze, it probably still smelled so bad. 
Dude, that reaction though. I can't believe like, look, look at his face. Look at his face. He's just like, what just happened to me? Oh my gosh. Social media, who I even interviewed to make sure he seemed legit, decided it would be a good idea to steal my package from me and never had any intention of either putting it out on his porch or sending it back to us. Wow, like people are just like reckless. Like, oh, okay, this could be such a good idea. These phones in there, aren't probably even that expensive. Like, I, I just don't know what he's gonna do with that. Sell it on the black market for like 100 bucks or something. What a, what a waste of time. And so after a little detective work, I discovered he gave us his real name and phone number, but he shipped it to his buddy's address. So I found his real address. Oh my gosh, how stupid is that? Why would, okay, if you plan on doing something like this, why would you give your real name? And real address. Oh my gosh. Just please be like at least smarter. Wow. That is so disappointing, honestly. <laughs> I thought he would be like smarter than this, but oh well. I might have gone on their website and said I was very interested in learning more and then ordered $300 worth of their starting course material so they know he's a very high value contact worth keeping track of. Custom postcards just for him. For example, he's from Texas, so I thought a thank you note for his $500 donation to Texans for Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign would be nice. This guy's just gonna get spam mail for the rest of his life. I went on Google Maps and looked up his neighbor's addresses and hypothetically, I might have accidentally sent them to a random assortment of houses around him. I think he could have done like some kind of automated software, just like run it on one computer or, or just set it up on like a web browser or something like that, that would just automatically send out these uh, postcards like every month for the rest of his life, like through some company, just, just pay like a dollar every month to send out the po postcard to that specific address and just like randomly generate some, some text. I don't know, take some Twitter, posts or, or something he's mentioned on social media and you can just like send it over to him and just for, for the rest of his life. And quite a few people took the package back to their house, but instead of opening it, they called to tell us they had our package because they were worried someone else would take it. And so instead of glitter and fart spray, I gave them $400 because that was the opportunity cost for them when they made the right choice. Ah, that's so awesome. That's really good. Like they, they did the right thing and they got rewarded for it. Even though they didn't expect a reward, Mark still gave them a reward. So I, I think that's, that's really awesome. Good job promoting, doing the right thing, and hopefully you people who are watching will do the same. You will do the right thing. Surprise, mother <laughs> It's... <laughs> It kind of looks like there was like this invisible force that pushed him back, but that he like flies like, whoa, poof. but no, no, it's just, it's just glitter. Hello? The concern on their face is real, like, when the police chatter is going on, they're like, ooh, crap. Dude, like, this was funny right now for like 30 seconds, but man, this is, this is legit. If this is actually police, I am dealing with this. We gotta go. Thank you so much, guys, for checking out this video, and thank you, Mark Rober, for putting together this amazing video. Anyone who's watching this video, I truly recommend checking out Mark Rober's YouTube channel and like his videos. He's doing great content, great engineering, and I highly recommend you to take a look at it. Other than that, make sure you hit that like button, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, and keep it the work, and I'll see you next time.